Welcome to my channel, I'm Dr. Romano. For those of you who see me on LinkedIn, I wanna thank you so much for all the followers. At this point, I have over 1,500, and I'm very thankful for all of that, as well as the people that connect directly to my profile. That's over three to 4,000 people. I wanna thank all of you as well, and I wanna thank all the questions that you have been asking me. I really appreciate them. You are those people who reach out to me, send me emails, call me, and I really appreciate it. I also appreciate the advice, the advice people give me, um, such as those hedge fund managers, funds of funds, who I speak to directly to. I wanna thank you again. So we're Americans, I'm American, I was born here, okay? Even if you're not American, doesn't matter. But what does matter is that Americans have this mentality that they are supposed to value big brands. And it's just because of our government structure that big uh, or small companies, or whatever the size company is, they can grow as big as they want, depends if there's a market demand for that product. And so that's why our country is dominated by large, big brands that are recently come about, or it's not like they're old 200 years where in France and other countries, they have business guilds. So you may not be able to put a business in that square radius if there's another business there. And, but we don't have that in America. We have a free capital society and we believe in big brands. Now, I'm gonna walk you through as to what you're thinking and why you think that way. So, people hate hedge funds. Whatever it is, it's from the media. There's nothing that really, that in my PhD research and as well as eight years later, or seven years later, I uh, continue to do research on hedge fund selection, uh, there's just this mentality that they're gonna lose their money. Now, I could say this because I used to work for an investment bank, but let's talk about exactly what goes on at, in an investment bank. So basically, on a trading floor, there's men and women that work in a group with a head trader. And that particular trading group is called the trading desk. I was the person at the investment bank that would review those trading books before the chief financial officer would take a look at those books. I was the person who made sure if any areas that were in red, that means overexposed, that there were bullet points as to why they were in red, what were they doing to get out of red, and who was the risk manager and head trader dealing with that situation. So I was very disgusted with how risk management would kind of stand, on, stand over a particular trading desk and sort of guide them through how to manage their risk. And um, that was really elementary and I knew that. I said, wait a second, these traders, they need a risk manager to tell them how to get out of their losing trade. Doesn't make any sense. But you see, a hedge fund doesn't have that because a hedge fund could be one or two people. I'm not talking about the big ones. We don't want to talk about the big ones. That's a separate video. Um, they're just repeating the same thing that a investment bank, they're hiring traders to trade for them. And again, you could see that in their returns. It's like they're constipated. Their returns actually look like they're constipated. I know I joke around on YouTube, on my channel with different, you know, comments, but to me, that's what the returns look like. And what happens is when traders have too much AUM, that's capital under management, they're trading, uh, uh, positions, because position is an actual, um, if they're interested in, let's say, IBM, how much are they going to invest in IBM? And so let's say they take 10 million and place it in, on the stock market for IBM. That's a position. So I'm not telling you go to invest in IBM. Sorry, it's okay. And when a trader trades, they are the one that comes up with their own trading strategy, okay? You could ask a hedge fund manager, well, what's your strategy? They're not gonna really tell you the truth. Secondly, you shouldn't be asking that because it's an insult to them. Why would they tell you their edge on the market? And so the fact is, is that they're gonna tell you a, a puffy, fluffy version of what they actually do. And that's, that's okay, because it's not your business to ask them what their strategy is. 
your business as an investor, and I'll get into this in other videos, on how to select a fund, what to look for, all that stuff. So that's why you need to subscribe to my channel on YouTube so that you can see those videos or follow me on LinkedIn. Now, again, the difference between a trading floor on an investment bank and the trader or one trader or two at a hedge fund is that the hedge fund traders, they've already perfected their exit strategy, okay? Because they have a track record. A track record is more than five years of trading experience uh, and somehow they have to prove it. Then somehow they find capital through possibly family members or friends or neighbors or people that they meet and they start trading their capital. Then they create an actual a track record uh, and they establish their fund, which means it's legal structure. And from there, they typically, uh, someone who's proficient will do pretty well once they get over the hump of the position size, the nervousness, etc. Now, already so if they need five years of a track record for me to actually even look at that funds, then how many years of trading experience do they really have? They're not going to just say, oh, I know how to trade. I want to start a hedge fund. And they're just going to start placing trades on the stock market. No, that doesn't happen. Somehow before they establish their hedge fund, they have become proficient at what they do. That's managing risk. That's all about what a hedge fund does. You have winning trades and losing trades. The w losing trades are the ones that they have to actually manage. Their winning trades are beautiful. They're green. They're doing great. It's just a matter of closing out the trade and taking in their profits, whatever it is, 20% or 30%. I don't know what it is. So that is a major difference between a hedge fund and a trading floor at an investment bank. Okay. Now the trader, at the hedge fund trader, the owner of the company, that person has been trading for full, uh, well, between minimum of, it's got to be seven years. Because if you, uh, you're, well, for me, in my case, I would only look at you if you have at least three to four years uh, of trading as a hedge fund manager and you have your legal structure set up. But by the fifth year, I'll actually conclude to include that fund in my portfolio. But I'm following you at the minimum of three years. And depending on how well you do, I, I rank you. Then the other situation is the trader at the investment bank, how many years experience do they have trading before they start managing your pension or your investments? The fact is, and this is what happens, I work there, I know how it works. And back then I was working for risk management in the chief financial office. They would recruit, the trading floor would recruit one from Ivy League schools. So HR would go to all these recruiting uh, events at the universities and they would look at all these applications. A very primitive process by looking at people's grades and what they studied. The whole situation, the whole way of doing it is so primitive. Then they put them in a ranking score. Oh, who's the best? Meaning the best grades. Just because someone is capable of passing a test doesn't mean that person's smart and innovative or capable of trading. The fact is, is that person has a short-term memory that's expansive. And when you have a short-term memory, you're able to pass a test and get a hundred. But the issue becomes, is your long-term memory strong and are you highly visual? In other words, in order to be a trader, you need to be highly visual and remember your mistakes. Never make the same mistake twice. That's someone who has a very long-term memory. They could remember things that typical person wouldn't. Now, that is where the investment bank lacks because they're recruiting these people who don't have a track record. They only have a college degree and they start them off as a assistant trader that position as assistant trader, you are very, very lucky person. That's number one. Because if you actually survive, you're probably making a couple million dollars a year. Now, based on the book, uh, it's called um, Occupational Titles, 
that particular position is between 2.5 years and five years. That's what people last, how long they last at the trading as a trader. Yes, you have the head trader who's probably been there for 10 years uh, or multiple companies for 10, maybe 15 years, but the head trader is not the one placing all the trades. So in other words, it's like the head trader is the referee in a boxing match and you have two guys pu punching each other out and then all of a sudden there's a wrong punch that shouldn't have happened and the referee comes over and says, you know, pulls them apart. So you're going to tell me that a head trader is going to manage every single trade for 10 people, for 20 people? No. It's almost like the head trader is the sort of um, advisor, uh, sort of the one that's the manager, and you have all the little people doing all the little work. So that's very ineffective, doesn't make any sense. But at the hedge fund, in the hedge fund uh, company structure, you have one person or two people trading that work together or they, there's just one person trading. And then the other person is actually the investor, is the one with the money who became a partner. When you work for a company, it's quite evident that you are gonna wait until the company tells you what to do. You are not gonna take the role to make decisions because you are just an employee. The trading books at the investment bank, the actual profit and losses, this is what that was telling me back then when I was reviewing them. Whereas on, in a hedge fund, a small hedge fund, just one person or two people, whatever it is, I don't see that in their returns. The return profile is extremely different. And so I wanna to explain to you that, so in other words, the investment bank has 20 year olds, 30 year olds trading their capital with no track record, but the, in, the, the hedge fund manager has a track record and has, has in, drenched their entire career in trading. They are the ones that are responsible for improving their trading strategy called risk management strategy, their exit strategy, whatever you want to call it. The investment bank trader, you're not allowed to do that. You're just an employee. And so I'm not here to insult anyone. I'm just trying to explain the difference between a hedge fund manager and a trading floor on, at an investment bank. So the question is, would an investor allow a 20 year old to manage their portfolio, their retirement portfolio or, or their whatever, their savings? So in other words, let's say you go give a 25 year old all your money to trade. Would you actually do that? I wouldn't. I would give my money to the hedge fund manager who has eight years trading experience, minimum trading, five years just to qualify them, to select them for a funds of funds, and another probably three to five years of proving their strategy and trying to find capital to trade. It doesn't happen overnight. And now, yes, there's rich people who their parents put money into the trading account and they trade with, and then they see that they're able to make a 2%, 5% return a year per year. And they're like, oh, I'm, I'm trading, I'm, you know, I'm qualified. Let's see how qualified you are when the market goes down and your losing trades become even bigger. You better have a really good exit strategy. And that's one of the most fundamental um, times that a hedge fund manager has to prove themselves is when the stock market does go down or up too much. Depends what type of strategy they're using, calls or puts or whatever it is. So I want to continue to answer that question. Why would an investor actually trust a 25 year old, 35 year old to trade your assets? Because at the investment bank, that's who's trading your assets. At the investment bank, I mean, at the, at the not the investment fund, let's call it a hedge fund. The, at the hedge fund, that's not what's happening. These are mostly older people, mid 30s to 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, who have an amazing track record. And their track record is proven to be 100% accurate because hedge funds have an audit company and they have an administrator 
they have no ownership in that company. It has to be independent company to get their returns reviewed, uh, do the accounting, the administration work, as well as an audit company to come in and check those documents. So this fantasy that people have that they're afraid of hedge funds, it's just a fantasy. Answer the question, would you give your assets to a 25 year old to trade at the investment bank? And the answer is no, you wouldn't. So why do you continue to trust the big brands? And unfortunately, investment banks, it's very hard to keep traders who have 10 years working experience or eight years working experience because they're making a lot of money. And sometimes they could get emotional and HR comes and fires them because they mounted off to someone. Unfortunately, we are old human. And everyone has a different way of managing their emotions and their stress. We are not numb humans. And this freedom, uh, not freedom, it's more of an easy way to fire someone. It is an absolute disgrace of what I see at the investment, uh, investment bank. Whereas a, at a hedge fund, the owner of the company is not going to get fired because he has a little or she has a little emotional issue. Damn right, that person's gonna have some stress. They're traders, they're human. It's okay to start cursing and screaming. It's also okay to have a bad day. And you're gonna see that in their returns as well at the hedge fund. Whereas if you make a mistake at an investment bank, you're basically, the stress level goes so high that the head trader may fire you because you were on the wrong side of the trade and you should have known. How could you expect a 25, 35 year old actually to comprehend what they're doing? Doesn't matter if they go to an Ivy League school, that has nothing to prove to someone that they're qualified. It's just, your ignorance to believe that people that go to Ivy League schools are so qualified. Those are people that become great managers because they could remember everything that happened at the meeting, they don't even have to write it down, then regurgitate that in an email and repeat. So basically, what are they really doing? Is that quali uh, qualifications? And so that's the edge today is why would you allow a 25, 35 year old to, in, to manage your assets? Where at a hedge fund, that person is not no 25, 35 year old. That person's a lot older and they have a track record. They've been trading four to three years before they even had capital. And then another five years of actual proven track record in their hedge fund. And when a stock market collapses, that's the evidence if they did actually well and they were able to manage those losing trades. I wanna thank you so much for watching. Please remember to subscribe to my channel on YouTube, Dr. Hedgefund. Please remember to follow me on LinkedIn, Dr. Anthony Romano. Search Dr. Anthony Romano Hedge Funds. I wanna thank all those people that send me emails every day. And if you do send me an email and I don't respond to you, please remember to actually send another one because I have so many people calling me up and sending me emails that I can't keep track of it. So just remember to be persistent and I will get back to you. It's just a matter of time. Thank you so much. Have a great day.